Kamen Rider. Cyclone Rise. Rocking Hopper. Type 1. Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426, and today we have the review of the Premium Bandai Exclusive, or P Bandai Exclusive, SHF Kamen Rider Ichigata. Now this is a movie exclusive writer, I wanted to point that out. Now technically you might, uh, in the main series you are able to actually see the main, uh, the actor who played the writer in the main series, but not the writer the, himself, so I just wanted to point that out. Now in the, this is, this writer was from the regular, the first generation movie. Uh, for the Kamen Rider Zero One series as well, so uh, it's basically a story where um, the timeline gets distorted for the Kamen Rider Zero One timeline. So the the main character goes back in time to fix the situation and also meets his father, which was technically not human; it was a human gear slash android, and turns out to be a Kamen Rider as well. So he gets to see some of the past as well. And we find, and in the movie, while it was only seen in the movie, the writer actually did to had some really awesome. Uh, battle sequences as well, so which I think was enough to actually give him, give him a SHF treatment, although not in retail and in, in premium Bandai, but still it turned out extremely well. All right, so let, now let's see what we get from the figure. So as you can see on the background, you might see two more riders because um, I want to clarify one thing now for those who aren't too familiar with the series. Uh, for Kamen Riders, they use these belts to transform, and previously I have reviewed the Kamen Rider. Horobi and Kamen Rider 001. Now, Kamen Rider, this is the main character, although not in his original base form. This is actually the the character using a different belt uh, to transform into this form. Because in the in the movie, he goes to the past, but there's a few errors, like in the timeline, where to the point where he could not transform into his original form. So he had to use this other belt, which is not technically meant for humans, and, and transform into this form. So uh, as you can see, this and while these two belts are exactly the same, these two belts are called the Force Riser, and then while this one is a, the exact same mold or shape, but in a different color, that is called the Cyclone Riser. Now, either way, whatever, whichever belt you use, uh, when you use a belt that is in this design, you might see some a distinctive uh, characteristics of the rider, where you can actually see all these straps going on. You can see those belt straps or straps all over the, the part, you know, connecting the whole body with the armor. So that's one distinct uh, design. Other than that, I'll, the main reason why I'm pulling these two out is not to do a like a direct comparison, but more of a to clarify that they're not. This main this character is not a, like a reuse remold of the previous uh, figures. So as you can see, the chest and overall design is entirely different. So you can definitely say this is a unique, uh, its original mold when you built when this figure was made. So just wanted to point that out as well. All right, so that's that. All right, now let's see what we get for components. So. Uh, Actually, before I go for components, there's not many components because this rider does not use any weapons. This is like a combat, close combat type, uh, you know, fist fighting rider. And this is actually a, this rider is actually more of a reference to the original Kamen uh, Rider Ichigo. Because uh, his name is Ichigata, Ichigo, they actually used some some characteristics or features of, from the original design and then made him, they kind of like modernized the design here. So that's a really nice reference. Now, while taking pictures, I accidentally dropped the figure and apparently the figure dropped down head first. And because of that, one of the antennas actually snapped off. Now, I did a instant fix with glue, but I don't trust that glue to last long. And depending on which glue... Uh, now, this is not my first time, you know, a figure part breaking off, but this is the fir first time for the head antenna part, which is very visible, breaking off. So, uh, for now, I used a kind of different glue because the previous glues I've used, it could either... It will stick, but sometimes it will either melt the plastic or it will strip off the paint. So this time I use something else. Hopefully it will last longer. So uh, let's see, let's talk about components. So first of all, obviously uh, hand-wise, I'm currently using the fist hands. Uh, other than that, there's no weapons. And here we have the Cyclone Riser. They did an excellent job on the painting there. Uh, and then we have the key, which is the Zetsume Rise key. I believe that's the correct term. Uh, the, it's the Rocking Hopper, which is basically another Grasshopper type uh, Pro Rise key. Uh, uh, grasshopper theme key as well 
And here is all the components. Other than the two fists, you get two sets of hands, two more sets of hands. So here we have your typical open style hands, uh, which is pretty much for posing. And finally, we get these two extra hands. So they, once again, this is kind of similar to the other hand we saw, but it's a, it's slightly a different uh, shape slash design. And we we have this fully you know, karate chop style hands. But once again, this is actually another. Uh, hand for a specific pose that he does in the movie because in the movie uh, there were a lot of combat scenes and when he does his rider kick against uh, Kamara 001 there's this signature pose he does and this is pretty much this hand is pretty much meant for that pose as well yeah the main reason I bought this is because his combat scenes everything that every like time this rider would show up in the movie it was amazing like the combat scenes were really done well so which is why I think it deserves a SHF figure uh, treatment. So uh, other than the broken antenna, I'm going to be extremely careful with the head, but other parts it should be fine. So looking at the head, very nice design. I gotta really admit the design is very unique, and yeah, we still have these straps, but compared to the other previous riders, you don't actually see like the middle clips. Oh well, I guess this could be a clip, but you don't see many clips going on here as well. So very well done. The head can go down that much up that much as you, as you can tell I'm being extremely careful and the 360 twist is not possible because actually these parts are blocking the way now one thing I was really hoping now and this is, has been kinda like a, a self gripe that I had for a while uh, let me just uh, fix the neck a little bit there we go uh, a little gripe I had was that is in the series like writers would have this like really cool effect parts or like cool effects before doing their signature move and once again this writer before he does his signature move like this red you know Arwa would see would be seeping out from the from this neck and I was really hoping they would at least include like a, a small clear effect part for that but sadly they didn't Alright, so the head, I guess it's your pretty much typical thing, but be uh, do be careful when you're moving the head. You, you want to also make sure that the neck joint is moving together, or else you're going to get a really awkward position neck. Alright, for, so for the body, one thing I noticed for the body is that, I mean, articulation is pretty much the same. You have a nice ab crunch, can go side to side. It can actually twist the top section almost 360. I, I think I can kind of force it, but um, you might have noticed that the, this chest piece here, this on the armor part, there's actually another joint here in the middle, so uh, which, is, which allows you to move a little bit more freely instead of like locking into place. So that's one interesting aspect I've noticed so far. And one thing, you can actually pull out the key. Now, I'll... Now, for usually I wouldn't really complain, but I wish this writer would have at least come with the closed up progress key as well. Not because not not because I want to put it in there in the slot, but uh, I just wanted to kind of you know do his you know henshin sequence as well. So that would be been really cool. And then also the force riser when you actually try to do a signature move, you in this case you have to push this back this red lever back in, and then it will close the key and then pull it back out to open and to, and allows you to do the signature move so I was hoping that you would at least we would get a closed up key version so we can recreate that situation but sadly no now uh, okay we've seen the main body as well so uh, let's look at the back for now so looking at the back very clean back very mechanical actually looking back as well instead of like an organic uh, situation so well not exactly organic but like previous riders in the back it was pretty simple like comparing with this or uh, with Horobi, you can definitely tell it was more, they're always simple, but this one they actually did a really good job uh, on the design. It's not boring, it's not too simple, but it has like a good mechani mechanical-ish design. And the belt strap is white, while the other ones were silver. So which is, which is kind of interesting to see these days. Uh, and then let's get the legs. So legs, we have a nice sizable going on here. And then we can go for about almost 90 degrees or a little bit depending on how you angle it. So 90 degrees to the front, back. Uh, now, as you can see, it's not exactly straight. You have to go to in, in an angle to go 90 degrees to the, uh, to the back. And we have a, we could technically work it out. But for now, because of the armor piece right over here, the this bluish section is kind of blocking the way. So you can't really go 90 degrees to the side unless you do something really crazy. But once again, not really recommended. And then we have a nice bend on the, on the legs. And then feet wise, uh, the feet I think were are slightly larger than your typical SHF rider feet, but or a little bit wider. But that's a good thing. And then we have a nice pivot going on here as well, and a toe bend. Once again, I, I barely use these toe bends to be fair. 
All right. So as mentioned, there's not this writer does not use any weapons, so there's not much to show. So I'll be right back with his signature pose, or basically his pose that he does before his rider kick, and we'll end it end it off there. Okay, I'm back. So here is the signature pose that he kind of does before his rider kick. Now, technically, he would also do something similar before transformation, but since we're lacking a close progress key and a hand or a Zetsu rise key, sorry about that, or a hand that can hold the key, we can't really replicate that as well. And uh, on part uh, the pre previous part, I forgot to actually mention, or I didn't really mention the arm articulation because I wanted to point it out right now. So. Uh, I wish I could do a much more natural looking pose because once again it is kind of, how should I say, lacking. But uh, the main reason it may feel a little bit lacking if you bought this figure or if you're doing it for yourself it's because uh, while the shoulder articula articulation is pretty good, to be fair, it does move a good amount compared to you know other figures as well. Uh, and then the arms are, still have your typical articulation, 360 rotation on the arm itself. Uh, you still have a nice bend going on there and then moving 360 entirely is no problem as well. But once again in the series. Uh, the right, the the actor or the suit actor would do more. He would move in a more natural stance because he doesn't doesn't go from A to B like that. It's just it's a few process bef uh, between movements and uh, and there's also more effects going on while he's doing this pose. And I would like to mention this is a really nice reference because uh, the original Kamrider Kamrider Ichigo also does a similar pose to this uh, before his rider kick. So this rider is a really nice reference from the past. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the review. So once again, this writer, there's not much components. There's no weapons, there's not many hands, but still, this is a writer that showed really cool action, had a really cool action in the movie, and his design is pretty cool, and also, is I would say, it's one of those few writers that, that proves that you don't need to have, like, multiple weapons to look cool or to be fun. This writer itself was really fun for me to pose and, you know, just play around with. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the premium online exclusive SHF Comrider Ichigata. If you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.